Hello and welcome back to our GD3D's 3D Pathfinder YouTube channel. It's time for some City Engine content. In this short session, we'll be making our own 3D City Digital Twin, all while not leaving the application or doing any preparation. Follow along for a quick tutorial on creating your very own London, well, the central parts anyway. Load up City Engine and create a new scene. I do this by right clicking on the Scenes directory in the workspace window and going to new then selecting city engine scene. Once loaded I always make a habit of displaying the information display bar by clicking on the camera icon in the top right corner of the 3D view window pane and making sure information display is checked. Next go to the file menu and select get map data. This will load up a map dialog where you can zoom to and select an area of interest, in this case central London after pressing the set extent button. I suggest not making your area of interest too big first time around so you can get a feel for how it all works without worrying about your computer's specifications. Check you have the right kind of resolution for your terrain and base map. You might want to experiment here sometimes, it really does depend on what you're doing and how big the area you're or of interest is. Also ensure in this session that you have the download networks and footprints as well as generate box checked as you see here uh, for OpenStreetMap data. You might have to wait a little here for the data to download and if you have requested OpenStreetMap data as I have done you will also eventually get a dialog box that allows you to import various elements of the OpenStreetMap data. Don't worry though, for now accept the defaults, all you need has been pre-selected and click finish. As the data is imported into the scene, you will see like on screen at the moment, the terrain and base map as well as streets and buildings magically appear. This is because Esri has made a special procedural rule file for this type of data. Okay, now upon close inspection, you will see not everything looks correct. Um, heights might be wrong um, and things will look like they've got flat roofs for the most part. This is because you're using data collected as part of the OpenStreetMap data project, so it relies on community contributions. Now have a quick look in the maps directory of our City Engine project. You'll see the imagery, terrain and base map, plus OSM data here. We can use this again without having to use the get map data in other scenes. And if you right click on the OSM data and do import, um, you'll see that dialog box that we saw the first time. Now let's have a quick look at the inspector pane on the right hand side here. You'll see the applied rule files various attributes for adjusting. You can see drop down lists and, and numbers in places. Um, I'll let you experiment here or you can watch me play around with some of them. Playing around with things in City Engine is always encouraged, especially when it's Esri's rules. Um, and here you'll see various options for texturing. Not all of them are appropriate for London, but maybe in your city it will be. Um, and it's certainly a good starting point if you do need that sort of realistic looking environment, although I'm not sure St Paul's Cathedral uh, should look like an office block as it does here. Note here the various visualisation options, not just generic textures and white buildings, but also something more diagrammatic. These are principles you can take forward into future 3D scenes that you make in City Engine.
finally, make sure you save your scene by going up to File menu and clicking on Save All. Now I know this is not the most in-depth dive for City Engine, but I am trying not to overwhelm viewers with too much detail on these shorter videos. That will come later when I get a hang of all this video editing and stuff. Oh gosh, you made it to the end again. Well, if you're still listening, please like and subscribe to keep my motivation up making these videos.